What's up Scrollgers, it's Nerp here, and today we're going to do a ranked match video, and uh, this is my first ranked match since the uh, uh, big great rebalancing update to the live server, we're in 1.2 now, and with that came uh, lots of balance changes. Uh, so I've been playing around, my growth deck didn't really change at all, I mean Earth or Mystic is still pretty good uh, with 3 health. Just shows how OP she was before, and um, yeah, late game order took a bit of a nerf because of uh, de decreased attack to two of its staple units, Gallant Defender and um, Rush's Powers and Imperial Resources, a slight nerf, but uh, it, it kind of has the same idea, so that deck didn't really change much. Uh, those Both those creatures are still useful in those decks. For me, the decks that uh, changed the most were... Decay and energy. Um, I'm still having trouble with energy deciding what's the best deck. Like I want I really am trying to force a a uh, range, a human range energy deck to work. I'm really trying hard, but I'm just I'm kind of afraid that just the automatons are still better. Like I because with the hired marksman buff to four health, I'm trying to push uh, the human uh, range energy back. It's a really fun deck. But the the ramp potential of the automaton decks, like Donkey Seventy Four's automaton deck, still feels slightly better, even with a little Automata Forge nerf. Well, Automata Forge is probably running both decks anyways. Uh, and now I saw Donkey Seventy Four is running Ken Automaton, so I'm really not sure what to go with energy right now. But with Decay, uh, I mean, obviously the ch the the huge buff to uh, uh, Cluster Hex is basically the new Ball Vine team, and then there is, uh, what what's it called? Mm. Blightseed. Blightseed is uh, pretty good now. Um, the more new Poisonous trait for Mangy Rat makes Mangy Rat playable. So, I think that Mono Decay, Mono Creature Heavy Decay with Witch Doctors and stuff uh, is really going to do okay with this new blight seed change um, but it didn't really get itself in that the real deck that I think was buffed here was poison decay because now poison decay finally has a good uh, substitute for baldine taint after the nerf with cluster hex and also the new poisonous trait makes mangy rat a pretty good scroll poisonous trait just makes you run away you could you can see that happens when we put a festering frick on the board so I'm gonna play a ranked match with uh, poison decay and I am actually, I think, one rating behind Donkey74. I'm 1944 right now, he's 1945. And here's just a quick glance at the deck I'll be using. So I'll be back when a match is found. Alright, found a match. Let's join it. Right, sure. Hello and good luck, have fun. Uh, we go first. Not quite as important as if we were playing like a aggressive deck like Temple Order Ag Growth, but it's I think still an advantage. Um, I'm going to it's nice having really festering freak, infectious blight, halls. I do like having that stuff. So I'm going actually gonna keep the starting hand. I'm gonna get rid of the early brain lice. I'd rather have an infectious blight going. Have creature to play. So Let's see what faction he's playing. Growth. Uh, mangy rat. Against growth, I think I'm going to get rid of the cluster hex right now. Um, I want to have a stream of creatures here. Mangy rat. Uh, the poisonous trait just really nice for growth. I mean, at worst, it's going to be a one for one trade probably. And mangy rat's only one cost. Like the mini festering freak. Yeah. So next turn, festering freak. And if he plays anything this turn, I can move towards it. Unless it's a brave. Alright, he's gonna ragged wolf it. So that's gonna be a one for one trade. So I mean, fine, whatever. Uh, blight bearer is nice. But. Do I get rid of the halls? I'm going to get rid of the halls. I only have two halls in the deck, so I don't love getting... Or do I throw? I'm not sure. Um, the reason I do that... 
I should have played the faster root down here in case he has like a mangy wolf. I know I'm just gonna get a free damage on this when this is gonna die anyways. But against growth I might not have even a chance to play the halls. So I'm gonna sacrifice it. I'd rather have two surefire plays in the next couple of turns. Um so yeah. Earthborn Mystic. A new Mystic. Ooh, this is tough now. Alright, we're getting the Blight going. We don't need the Blight Bearer in front of our guy. Okay. Yeah, we don't have to worry about like a Kenfolk Veteran or anything. So, he'll likely move up. Um, oh, I just realized something. I, that was a mistake. I should. I shouldn't have put the blood in this mistake this turn. Because on his turn, it's going to go down to one health. And then he's going to have an opportunity to let it kill itself by drawing an enchantment. So he's going to get value out of that, and I'm going to lose the Blight. Ah, oh, darn it. That was bad. Ugh. Oh well, the Blight's going to be gone. I'm going to sacrifice language for resources. Play the Oblivion Seeker. Right. Right in front. We need scrolls. We don't mind it dying. So now hopefully he doesn't realize that he can just let this destroy itself. Yeah, that was a huge blunder by me. Yep, he gets rid of it, so he had a very nice trade there. Um, got S roll out of the Mystic and destroyed my Blight. Oh well. I think uh, so far this match is pretty good for us though, because against growth to not really be overrun by turn 5 and your control deck, you'll probably have a good time during the match. Not not sure if he's like aggro growth or late game growth. Looks not very aggressive. I had a cursed presence, so if I played the languid, I actually would have been able to play the cursed presence and kill the and keep the blight going. Oh well, I guess I'll I'll languid. And I'll fungify. Fungify. Okay, fungify is so kind of experimental. Not sure if I want to keep it. Um, really, I think it's going to be nice on the poisonous creatures like Festering Freak and Meiji Rat. Uh, just going to take more people hitting it to get to, uh, to die. So more things can get poisoned. I think that's a good idea. So uh, now it would be good to top deck like the Halls of Omasa or something. Because he has more resources than me, which is a little bit scary. Okay, he's going to move up. I'm going to spawn the wolf. Obviously, he only has one attack with a brother right now anyways. I mean, brother of the wolf is not something you really want to waste your languid on, but I had no other play, so I just did it. Alright, so the uh, Oblivion Seeker is going to go down. I'm going to get some scrolls. And there I have Infectious Blight and Cursed Presence. I'm going to sacrifice the Cursed Presence for scrolls. And I'll get the Blight going. Is this coming turn? I think I'm just going to Cluster Hex, which is going to make the Infectious Blight kill the Brother of the Wolf, and hopefully he has other creatures in this Brother of the Wolf's range, so I can uh, curse them as well. So now I guess against the K, you got to be wary of like your placement. Also, Myra Curse is a thing. I have that in the deck also. 
I got an insane value Meyer Crispin in a quick match earlier. I was testing like around with the decks earlier today. Um, I refined it to this. Um, I got some insane Meyer Curses before. Uh, so I am going to go for the Cluster Hex this turn. Uh, Soul Seal so good against Growth. What do I sacrifice? I'm gonna get rid of the Blight Bear. I'll go for resources. Alright. And I'm gonna move down, I mean. I'll gladly... Uh, Alright, that has Blight now, so... He's gonna... Move up, probably, to just hit me and get some damage on me, because he's gonna die anyways next turn. So maybe I shouldn't have moved down. Whatever, it's not a big deal. I think I'm going to slowly claw my way ahead of him now. Probably Languid the Great Wolf and play Oblivion Seeker next turn. We'll see. He's not going to attack this best ring, so he wants to get the idle damage in. Good option because he sees that he's going to have to win the game fast. Switch to the Owl is a bit scary. Uh, might just soul steal this right away. Alright. Yeah, I'm going to... Oh, I don't have to soul steal. Yeah, I'm going to soul steal it right now. I will languid... Ooh, damn curse. Hmm. Sacrifice Washer for Scrolls, and we're going to. Ooh, now we have Myra Curse. And an Infectious Blight. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Blight. So many options for me. Alright, now they both have it. This does not have curse as it stands though, so it would be good to get a curse presence. I have a damning curse and not much value on the board right now besides this guy which has a lot of health already, so a damning curse on a strong unit from him would be nice. So. I'll be happy. He plays like a. I'll be happy if he plays like a kinful Garl this turn. No, nope. I called it. All right, so he's gonna get some extra damage here. That means you are going to die a tick faster. And uh, what do I sacrifice? I guess I can I'm gonna go for scrolls. I'm gonna get rid of the Meyer curse. Necker again. That's cool. Here I'm just gonna damn curse though. Goodbye. And I'll just do idle damage. Because you're gonna die anyways. So now there's double blight on the sister of the owl. So seeing as he's late game growth, I suspect he has fertile soils. And he can start out ramping me if I don't get those oblivion seekers out or uh or I don't know, get um get Halzo and Masa out, so I'm a little bit worried. Haven't really been able to spend my resources that efficiently. I feel like every turn I'm left over with like one or two resources. Ideally, I want to get like a couple more. Alright, he's he might just let this thing die. Uh, hmm. I will get rid of the soul steel for resources, and I guess I'll just play the. 
Oblivion Seeker. It looks like he just get, wants to get rid of the Blight. That means he's not going to do anything this turn either. He might just Quake. If he has a Quake in his hand. So it's kind of a close match. Because he has a lot of scrolls. I need. I wish I got Howl's of Amalasa out earlier. Definitely would rather go against like a aggro growth than Lakian growth of this deck, I think. But we luckily for me, he hasn't had like a fertile slime. I mean the blight is gonna go away, but it's really slowed him down. So this I guess is my opportunity to um I should have these guys in the same row so I could engage that thing up top. I guess this is my opportunity to uh fill the board. I don't know. I mean I have a necker getting. So I could actually deal a lot of other damage fast. I don't know, he's a lot of he's a lot of scrolls. So I am worried. I mean, Necrogeddon Curse Presence in my hand means I can accomplish quite a lot, and it might be worth it because I will draw scrolls from the Oblivion Seekers. Brother of the Wolf. Fangar. I've been playing those things, it tells me he doesn't have like a Quake or anything, which is good for me. Uh, Curse Presence or Conduit. I'll get rid of the Curse Presence. Conduit combos. I mean, let's see. Do I want to Necro in this turn? I don't think so. Curse Presence combos is great in this deck, but uh, Animal Conduit combos solo with Necro and I kind of want that. Um, Cluster Hex. I wish like I can get more value out of Cluster Hex. Okay, let's just we'll just play the Conduit this turn then. Or actually, I'll play the conduit here. I'm also going to uh, get that going. I might go to waste if I end up necrogunning, but it's, it's good. It's good security. Uh, so, yeah, I just want to be able to take out this Nogna, so I'm going to stack up there. Alright, I'm dealing some idle damage. So yeah, necrogun combos well with uh, the conduit because I'll spawn revenants. So, uh, just looked up Right Your Own Scroll Scout. He is a pretty good opponent. He's a top 50 ranked player. Um, so, he's coming at me with some big guys, and I know he could have a god hand easily. Alright, he's going to take that out. And you spawn there, which is really nice because that means I can get a nice cluster hex. Uh, only problem is, I wish these guys were in the same radius so I can curse them both because I, not right now, I can't destroy this Nog Nest. Uh, Hmm. I think I might just let this Nognest spawn uh, things. I want to play the... I think I might actually sac sacrifice the Necrogun here. And no, I'm going to keep hold of it. Alright, good. So I'll just play this Cluster X. Kill you. You're gonna die. Deal more idle damage. Hide you back here and play Festering Freak. Alright, and there's two knocks. So we have to be wary of God Hand stuff. But we will, with that conduit in the back, we will spawn revenants. I still have a, ne I have a Mangy Rat Necrogad in play. And these guys both have curse. 
one thing about this deck, I think it might be a little too hard to win. I only have, I think, one Necrogeddon and one Watcher. Uh, obviously, it would be stomped on by Structure Energy. I've won a couple matches today with, uh, with this deck against, like, Automaton Energy and Range Energy Humans. Uh, so, yeah, I actually haven't lost with this deck uh, yet. Been doing a lot of testing since the update. Actually, not that much. So, yeah, this is interesting. I mean, he surely has God Hand shenanigans in his hand. It would be very strange if he doesn't... He hasn't played Fertile Soil yet. It's really strange. I'm not sure what he's up to. Does he not have Fertile Soil in his deck? If he doesn't, I think that's really good for me. Uh, I really want... The reason... Alright, there's Yara. I really wanted to... Uh, he's just going to take out the idol. Alright. Fine by me, I guess. And a Binding Root. Now, is Necro getting the play? Oh, this is tough. Is Necro getting the play? You see, he could just quake me, and then I'm in bad shape. But I kind of have to get rid of this. I'm going to get a lot of scrolls out of a Necro getting. Hmm. Do I bet on the fact that he doesn't have Fertile Soil or Quake and he's just like a weird growth deck? Get rid of the Marikers. Another Conduit. Mm. Necrogen. Do I want a Necrogen? If I don't, I'll go Conduit, Rod Eater. That would be interesting. Now I'm gonna Necrogen. and I think it's a good value play for me. I'm gonna get draw a lot of scrolls too. Okay, so let's do this. You guys are gonna kill you. I don't really actually need to play. I mean, yeah, I'll play the Mage Rat just to get more damage on the Yarl. Oh crap. Oh, I messed that up. I ran out of time. I forgot Necrogen takes a while to spawn. Darn it. I mean, actually, it's not a huge deal. Yeah, it's not a huge deal. I mean, I miss out on destroying a Nog, and I could have done more damage to the Yarl. If he has a Quake right now, I'm screwed either way. I do have a, do have a Damage Curse, but then all my Revenants die. Yeah, those this, I think that's the second time today I necker again and forgetting that the animation would take so long so I couldn't move the units afterwards oh, I should really really shouldn't do that I think I'm in really good shape, shape if he doesn't quake if he doesn't quake I really like my position if he does quake alright good Good, good, good. Maybe he doesn't run quick. Yeah, so the, the not, not moving around there wasn't a huge deal. I mean, this would be at 3 health and this could be dead. But it could have been worse. Could have been worse. So do I damage curse this and lose all my guys? I don't think so. All right, yeah, I don't think he's running quick. Because he's pouring it on the board right now. Um... I think we're just gonna let this this survive. Oh, another Necro. I don't have another Necro on the deck, I don't think. Uh, I think uh, this turn is going to be kill the three rats. And get a Halls going. I want the Halls going so I can ramp ahead of him. Get rid of the brain lice. Hmm. How do I do this? And whatever I play I might just die anyways. I'm 
Very strange how I'm doing this. Yeah, I want to kill the most creatures as I can. Okay, let's do it like this. And then halls. Okay. So yes, I realize that he can actually easily kill this rot eater with some stuff, but I don't know. Maybe I should have had the rod here in the top row. Yeah. Knowing he has probably a god hand in his hand, that's why I killed the rats instead of killing the Nog. I could have left two of the rats alive. Hmm. Really surprising so many spectators at this hour. Yeah, so. Actually, maybe I should have played the conduit last turn, not the... Maybe the halls was a little too greedy there, I don't know. Should help me get ahead of him. Veteran... He doesn't have anything to kill the Rod Eater yet. He needs something to just play a creature. Alright, that's going to kill the Rod Eater. Alright. So now we, uh... Do I get the halls or what do I take? I don't know. Well, this turn I want to Soul Steal and Damage Curse, I think. So we're not really going to be able to do much anyways. Um... I will take the. I almost wish I had the Necro again. Take the Oblivion Seeker. Alright, so we're gonna Damage Curse. Because you're scary. Then I'm going to sacrifice the Brain Lice for resources. I'm going to Soul Steal and play you. And here's to hoping he doesn't have godly stuff happening. <laughs> Man, this is really close. A Necrogen would be really helpful. Very nervous about this game right now. I ramped ahead of him. We're about equal in terms of resources and scrolls right now. He has more scrolls, but I have two more resources, so it's about fair. Uh, eventually, my deck would probably outlast his, but I'm not sure if I can last till eventually, because he's in the range now where he could probably god hand a lot. You haven't seen any god hands, though, so it's really strange. This is like, it's like I'm, here. Yeah, there's a god hand. It's kind of strange, though, because it feels like I'm facing like a late game growth deck, but then we've, we haven't seen many god hands. Uh, cluster hex probably right. Am I even, am I even gonna use it though? Should probably keep it right for uh, poison stuff. Actually. I'm gonna get rid of it actually. Okay, I'm gonna go conduit. Rot eater. Tries him. Could have played the Oblivion Seeker there, but I don't know. Let's see if I can get a Necker got in. This is where we haven't seen, that was the first god hand we've seen, finally, so now it feels more like late game growth. Another god hand would be pretty bad for me. I mean, I would get a bunch of revenants, though. Which is good, so I, I, yeah, now I wish I had the cluster hex, because the revenants could deal more damage. Ugh, I'm stupid. I 
I guess it did make a difference before not killing this nog up there. Okay, there's a rat king. Not good. Decay does not have really good, like, mass removal. I mean, I don't have return to natures or anything. Uh-oh. Hopefully, he only runs one goddamn. Uh, well, I gotta remember, these, these rats can only get the three attack. So, if I place my unit strategically, I should be okay. That was a mistake. Luckily, I'm not in a territory yet that I'm really afraid of losing suddenly. I mean, I lost one idol. I, other idols are pretty good health. I'm gonna try to protect that middle one a lot, though. Okay. I'm gonna breathe. Now. Cluster Hex, Oblivion Seeker. Cluster Hex, right? I have Nyra Curse, Cluster Hex. Yeah, it's surely the play. Yep. So if I Mire Curse, Cluster Hex, what's next to most guys? You're next to five, you're next to five. Okay, we're doing that. And then can I play that too? That's ten. Yep, we're getting rid of the Oblivion Seeker. Okay, so what do I want to do here? I guess I'm going to Mire Curse this. And now cluster hex. And now I will soul steal you. And have a 50% chance of hitting this rat. <laughs> Looks good. And I didn't get the 50% chance, but. That was a good turn. Hmm. My idol's actually open here. He doesn't have that many resources though. My deck's recycling. It's a good thing. Rod Eater is really valuable, I think. Still haven't seen a Quake. I mean, sure, I'm sure he runs Quake. Who doesn't run Quakes in late game order? Late game growth. We haven't seen Fertile Soils, though. How have we not seen any Fertile Soils? And there's another Rack King. Okay. So. Blight Bear is good. Blight Bear is 4 health. Can absorb 2 Rack King, uh, 2 3 attack creatures from a god hand after a couple rats hit it. Okay. There's a brew. Alright. Another rot eater. I'm going to keep the rot eater. I like the rot eater. Get rid of the mangy rat. I have a watcher getting. Well, that was uh, timed well, I think. Do I watcher getting? Probably, right? Watcher getting, and I destroy. I need to destroy stuff. Yeah, I should watcher watch getting. Yeah, we're going to get some husks out of it too, so that's good. Okay. And we'll get Revenant spawning. Um, what does that make us? We're actually... We don't have Darklings in the deck, so we can't rely on stuff like that to win. Oh, if I just had one of these closer to the bottom, I would have been able to win. Uh... So I will 
take that out. And I'll take those out. Alright. And if I actually have to, if this watcher survives this turn, I could have these revenants die next to it. And that would account to the, the watcher hits. We're starting to get to the territory of the game where idle damage is really important. Although both of us should have the scrolls and resources to sustain, like, blockers. Uh, and luckily for me, if he quakes now, look at all the things next to the Watcher. And I'm also going to get a Rot Eater down next turn. Um, so I'll have a big Rot Eater from the Revenant's Dying and possible Quake. But who knows, there probably isn't a Quake or Fertile Soils, seeing as we haven't seen them. Playing a odd late game growth deck. He went to 9, seeing as if he wants to win this game, he's going to have to make like a big play. Okay, just playing creatures this turn. So I'm happy about that. I'm going to actually go for both Rot Eaters. I really like how big they're going to become. And... I don't know. I guess I'll... I'm gonna play the halls. No, I should play both rod eaters, right? I'll play, I'll play three scrolls this turn. I wanna get you... No, I wanna... That is tough. Alright, yeah, let's get... Let's get this guy down to one... The one bit of poison damage hitting him. Um, let's go like this. Let's go like that. Alright, so we're gonna have two big right ears. Okay. So now we have two huge rot eaters we're in good shape i think we've won this game if he is quake we'd probably win uh we have two big rot eaters just need a sliver of poison to kill this guy by the way sorry if i'm talking low in this video it's just uh, most of my family's sleeping right now, so trying to keep it down. Also, my mom wouldn't be too pleased if she uh, saw I was still up. <laughs> okay. And control decks like Poison Decay, they're really fun to play, but I can see the pain on the other side. There's a rally. So what is that gonna do? Crimson bowl? I don't know. Is that it? And a crimson bowl. Is that gonna kill that rot eater? No. All right. Well, I'm fine with that. I guess. Get rid of the tribesmen. Um. I guess I'm just gonna hauls this turn. I won't bother with the cluster hex. Well, I can't actually pay for that. Uh. And I will try to maximize my buffs from this revenant unfortunately didn't top deck uh, didn't top deck any poison for this uh, but his deck actually just recycled so I mean just will just be chance if he has another rally or god hand Okay, and he really can let me hit any of the idols with these giant rod eaters. So it may have been wise to move up with this rod eater so I can uh, really engage his top idol. 
Actually, but not really, because this middle row and this row are only really be threatened by this Great Wolf. He is this Terrain Brute. He's not going to attack. Unless there's like a, a racking and something. Like, I'm not afraid of him attacking with a God Hand or anything, because the huge countdown really prevents that. That's why I don't love Terrain Brute in like a late game growth deck. If he doesn't clear most of this stuff, everything on my board has count down zero. I'm gonna draw a sword from the halls, so I do like my position. Did the watcher survive after the deck cycle? If it did, I kinda wanna draw that. And well this has five health actually, maybe Watcher won't be the biggest thing. Okay, he's taking his time. Went up to ten. Alright, we're gonna see a god hand now. Alright, well. That's going to kill one of the Rot Eaters. But I'm just going to win now. So. GGWP. Wow, that was a really intense game. Um, I felt like I was making good trades throughout the game. But. I eat rating is pretty good. PC was pretty high rated. I felt like I was making good trades throughout the game. But it turned out towards the middle and towards the late was pretty close because he was getting in that territory of late game growth where they can god hand and do stuff like that so it was a little scary but uh turned out drawing the right scrolls and it was pretty good so i guess that'll be it for today um i'm enjoying the new balance patch oh yeah also there's like new stuff in the store and everything not sure this guy happened to you guys but the new avatars like everybody has different ones i got two of the same one it's a little annoying like, what happened to I buy this one? I already bought this one for 15,000 gold. I don't really want to buy this one for 15,000. Uh, but, yeah, I'm a little afraid to do that. I'm just going to just take my money. Can I get a tier 2 R and Archer? <laughs> yep, so uh, I think I'm ranked number 1 now. And uh, that will be it for the video. So like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more content like this. And keep on scrolling, scrollsers. I'll see you next time.